Hello, my name is Ashtray Bentley, and today I'm going to show you how to make drum and bass drums. Now, these are inspired by Aphex Twin, kind of is like 2001 drugs era. Uh, let's give it a listen. All right. So there's kind of a uh, three-step process here to get this more glitchy sound here. To start, these are all the drums in this grouping. Now right off the bat, I grabbed a drum rack and then maybe 10 different samples and just threw them in the drum rack. A couple different kicks, a couple different claps. Uh, see, I didn't even use a couple of the sounds, but it's nice to have them there. If you don't know the rhythms too well, feel free to just like download a drum and bass loop and copy the rhythms in the drum rack. Now, this process is gonna help you evolve the drum lines over time and not just have to rely on a loop and that's gonna make the sound more original, you know? Right here, I just started with this channel Now, there's definitely some effects going on. We're just going to ignore those and cover those later. Just started with these drum sounds. If you want, like, even more original, old-school sounding drums, go ahead and, like, go into drums and grab a 505, 909, or 707, 808, whatever. Just grab one of those and work with some of those sounds. That's going to give you a more old-school feel. So you can look at my rhythm here, uh, a couple little notes. I used a couple different kicks. I really enjoy using this high-pitched kick. So, key here for writing these patterns is like, go ahead and do a good four bar loop, copy it, paste it, and then just refine, add little hits here and there, switch it up. And, and just kind of like dial into each measure. What I went ahead and did is added even more hits. I decided to do it on a separate rack. Um, sounds like. I just have a couple more. To some of the real electric sounds, it's nice to have like acoustic contrast, if that makes sense, like having more organic sounds in there to just kind of contrast them. So I will say when you have so many different sounds going on, make sure they're all really unique and cohesive because if you have like three claps, but they're all kind of the same, it's all gonna get a little bit just samey. You know, you need contrast if there's this much stuff going on. So what I did here is I just added a bunch of different channels here. And this is just my own personal workflow. You can condense this down and make it neater. Um, you could keep it all in one drum rack if you wanted. But I just kind of got more ideas and just layered it all on top. Uh, for example, one thing that I think is better to not use for a drum rack is something like this effect right here. Like reverse snares. There's definitely some audio processing that's going to be easier to do outside of drum rack. So yeah, once when you get this all figured out, your rhythms, get that all grouped together and bust into one channel, then you can start comping them all together and processing them. One thing I did here is I'm running it through a saturator. I almost always do that with my drums. I go saturator, full parallel, and then all my other processing all the way down into a limiter. But with the saturator, I use digital clip. This type of distortion is... I don't know, I think it just sounds better. I can't like technically explain what's going on program wise, but um, even though it's at zero, it's still doing something. It's just a different type of saturation in, in overdrive that I like. So I have that running into the full parallel. Basically what I did here is I just started layering on effects and I'm cycling through them. Progression goes. <laughs> That cool little sounds like a... 
all these like weird watery sounds I'm using Echo Bode for. Uh, Echo Bode is one of my favorite VSTs. Uh, it's just got a lot of weird wonky sounds. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of using that to sort of add some flavors here and there. Putting the effects on the whole right in the bus here. And then I'm also using this right here to kind of compress it down and add a, just a little bit of uh, dirt. Um, I, have, I have a couple EQs and compressors just regulating these effects because sometimes they just add ridiculous low end. I have the effects applied to the whole drum bus and then also I have this one right here. Just kind of like this weird disintegration sound. Uh, that's Echo Boy preset. Um, basically just try some effects, get crazy, experiment. It's gonna sound nice. And then the next step is to balance it out into audio. I decided to pitch it down because some of these are like tonal. You'll have to pay attention to that too. Um, some of the drum hits, be careful. It's a lot of things that is just a little bit too muddy around the 100 hertz and then I'm doing some compression and then this is just me refining the drums a little bit further. So when you are when you bounce it out into audio, there's a couple of new processing things you can do. For example, right here. So what I'm doing here is I took a segment of the drums and stretch them out and put it on texture mode and it kind of made this cool glitchy stuttery effect. I'll do it again right here just to show you real quick. Just take a segment, double click down and that's gonna like hold the section down while I stretch the other end. So double click again, grab the yellow and just stretch it out a good bit and then go to texture, adjust the grain size. See, it kind of adds this cool, like, stuttery effect. Super glitchy, super cool. Pitch stuff around. You know, there's all sorts of different processing things you can do here. And then by this point, you're already, like, layer three of processing. And then this is going to be super unique, cool drums that are going to be evolving throughout the whole track, and they're going to sound great. Um, there's lots of compression and EQing that you're going to be doing here, but this is a really fun process. I love doing these drums, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.